What was it like playing for Bill Walsh? Oh, Bill was great. I mean, Bill <coughs> Bill really taught me about a different level of play than, you know, when I when I left Notre Dame, you know, I, we'd played in, we won a national championship, played in a couple Cotton Bowls. We played the semi-pro team out in Los Angeles every year called USC, you know. <laughs> so, and uh, so I thought really I was kind of prepared for getting, you know, going into the league and you know, he, he demanded perfection. And when, when I talk about not diving for balls, and he used to, he was specific, and you had to be accurate. He goes, you run a guy runs a hook, it's, you know, you don't just throw the ball to him. You, you can see where the defender is, throw the ball to the opposite number to tell that guy to turn that way. R crossing routes, he wanted 12 inches in front of the numbers. And I mean, just he was a detailed perfectionist, and that's what he taught not only myself, but a lot, most of the guys on the team to try to perform at that level. Because if you tried to be perfect, he goes, when you come out here every day practice, you should try to complete 100% of your passes every day. I go, I, I do. And he goes, well, just how, how you just answered, I already know you don't. And, you know, he made you start thinking about things. And if you think about the teams when, whether it was Steve DeBerg, who was there before me with, uh, with Bill, and I know a lot of Steve, Steve Young, Steve Bono, who all came after me, there wasn't a lot of diving for balls, and there weren't a lot of, because Bill didn't want, you know, to see guys going and jumping and leaving their feet, and, and he, he demanded you, that he almost catch the ball for the guy. So, working with Bill, and, you know, we had, we had a little bit of lead way out on the field, which was good, and, you know, with just enough rain to make sure he was in control, <laughs> but uh, it was probably uh, um, a good reason for it, but... Uh, he was, he was fun. We miss him today. He always had a great sense of humor. And really dry, you know. He would do things and say things to you. Like we were late for curfew one night, Dwight and I, and in training camp, and he comes up and he's stretching. We're stretching. He comes up and starts stretching next to us, and he's going, yeah, how you doing? How you guys doing this morning? Going, good, coach. How are you? Yeah, doing fine. Uh, so you were a little late last night. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. No, well, do you want me to, you want to pay me cash or do you want to take it out of your check? <laughs> <laughs> so, and then when the day, I went, Ronnie Lott and I went to see him, but all the way to the day they, he passed away, Ronnie and I were the last two to go see him um, outside his family. And as we were leaving, Ronnie walked out of the room and, and I was walking out the room and he said, hey, wait a minute. And he was laying in bed. And I go, what, yeah, what's up, coach? What can I do for you? He goes, you owe me any money? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said, I don't think so, but, <laughs> but uh, that, was, that was just his, his way. And uh, uh, he was a great, great coach and a great man. Mm -hmm.